God bless you, my beloved. Thank you for joining us today. We are Abundant Grace Church, and I am Bishop Ramon Di Maria, and I'm the senior pastor of the church. You can contact us by email at abundant.grace at att.net. My beloved, we are doing a series titled From Everlasting to Everlasting from the book of Psalms. My main verse is Psalm 90 and verse 2, which reads as follows from the King James Version. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. God is eternal, and nothing will ever change that. Today, we will continue, and this will be part five of our message series. Now, I'm going to read a couple verses for you, and then we will go to our main verse for today. Psalm 90 and verse 8 reads, Thou hast set our inequities before thee, our secret sins, in the light of thy countenance. You cannot hide your sinfulness from God. Psalm 90 and verse 9 reads, For all of our days passed away in thy wrath. We spent our years as a tale. My beloved, God never forgets, but men for a short time will remember, and they will probably talk about you in conversations, but then after a while, they will forget that you ever existed. The only thing that may remind them of you is if they go to the cemetery and see your tombstone. Psalm 78 and verse 33 reads, Therefore, their days did he consume in vanity, and their lives in trouble. My beloved, people are going to and fro constantly, and they are not accomplishing anything, especially for the kingdom of God. So, if you are a godless person, now let me clarify that, because without Jesus Christ, you are godless. With Jesus Christ, you are godly, because in your own self, you cannot please God. So therefore, the years that you spend in this life without repenting and receiving Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, all those years are vanity. Now, our main scripture for today will be Psalm 90 and verse 10, which reads from the King James Version, The days of our years are threescore years and ten, and if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow. For it is soon cut off, and we fly away. So my beloved, the average lifespan here, according to the Word of God, is three score years and ten, seventy years. And if you have had a good life, you ate good, you exercised, you took your vitamins, your life may be four square years, but that is not the average nowadays. Although people are living longer, Without Christ, it's like they never existed because their life is vanity. Their life would have been in vain. Not that God wasn't able to use them. God uses sinners and he uses Christians to achieve his purpose. So our years, where it talks about our years, it's like, it's a generality. It's, it's a figure, okay? And that figure is what the writer of this Psalm was saying. It's a figure. It's just like when we use a figure of speech. It really doesn't have a full meaning. Because when we look at people's ages and when they die, some of them die at birth. Some of them during their teenage years. Some of them in their mid-years. Some of them reach adulthood. Okay, my beloved? So there is no guarantee that we will live to any age. So this is just a figure a generality of how long men will exist, how long they will live before they go to the grave. And three score years and ten, that's 60 plus 10, which is 70. And if because of unusual strength and vigor, or let's say a certain type of mind, where they don't think about death, but they continue to think about living and do everything that it takes to live, which is no guarantee they're going to live that long, they will exceed that. Hopefully, we all will exceed that. But many people, if you read the obituaries this week or you listen to the news or watch the news, you will see that many people died prematurely for whatever reason. We are not guaranteed tomorrow. 
So think about that today. You are not guaranteed that you will live until tomorrow. My word to you is make sure of the state of your soul. If you give your life to Jesus Christ for salvation, no matter what happens, you will be in heaven for eternity. But if you don't, you will be in hell for an eternity. Psalm 90 and verse 11 says, Who knowest the power of thine anger, even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. My beloved, God tolerates things. And he gives mankind an opportunity to come out of their sinfulness. But a lot of people won't come out of their sinfulness. So he allows them to dwell in their sin. And then when they leave this life, they are judged for that sinfulness. They are judged for not receiving God's plan of salvation. Psalm chapter 90 and verse 12 says, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Lord, we want to learn from you. Teach us through your word, through words of prophecy, through ministers of the gospel, through missionaries, teachers, prophets, those that work in the fivefold ministry. Use them to teach us that we will have the wisdom we need. Our hearts will be right with you. We will have wisdom to know what is right and right and what is wrong. Teach us to consider how short life truly is and to consider the certainty and the speediness of death because death can come at any moment for any of us, saved or unsaved. The difference is the state of your soul. And according to the state of your soul is where you will spend eternity. Psalm chapter 90 and verse 3 says, Return, O Lord, how long? And let it repent thee concerning thy servants. How much longer will your anger last? Have pity, O Lord, on your servants. You see, we are all servants of the triune God. We are to serve him. God gave a calling to Adam and to Eve to take care of the earth, to replenish the earth. That means that they were servants of the Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But people refuse to obey God's commands. Look at the world today. How many people break the Ten Commandments? They live in sinfulness. They disobey God. They rob, kill, destroy. They have a price to pay for their sinfulness. Psalm chapter 90 verse 14 says, Oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad in our days. My beloved, God's mercy for every new day starts at 12.01 and it goes to 12 o'clock midnight and then it starts all over again. If you get to see a new day and you get to see the end of a day and then, then you get to see a new day, you are blessed. You are satisfied with God's mercy for he has blessed you with another day of life, another day to serve him, to serve others, to do good. And don't forget to repent and receive his mercy. And when you know that you know that you know for sure that Jesus Christ is your Savior and Lord. You will be able to rejoice all the days of your life because you know that when you leave this life, you will experience joy for all eternity. But if not, your joy on this earth will be temporary because when you leave this life and you have not repented, then you will have, instead of joy, terror, pain, and agony for all eternity. Psalm 90 verse 15 says, Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us and the years wherein we have seen evil. See, God makes us glad because we see evil, but we're not inflicted with it. Okay, church, you understand that, right? When we see all the evil in the world and God protects us, that is a blessing that makes us happy to know that God has spared us. Spared us. Of course, it rains on the just as the unjust, or the unjust as the just, however you want to put it. But my beloved, God will keep you. But just knowing that you will spend eternity with him because your late affliction in this time is only for a season. God loves you and he sent Jesus Christ to die for you. That no matter what you face in this life, you will be with him for all eternity. Just look at the affliction that is on the people in this world. And look at us in the United States of America where we don't have all that affliction. Yes, there's murders. There's crimes. Yes. But look at the other parts of the world that people die every day. They're murdered in a cold-blooded manner. You know, when you see what happens around the United States, how people die 
every weekend, how people are killed every day. And you see how God has protected you. You say, I'm glad it didn't happen to me. It might be love. That is good. And that shows that God spared you. But know that you should have mercy and compassion and sadness for the bad things that happen to other people, especially children in schools. My beloved, we are to pray for our nation, pray for our leaders, pray for our children. My beloved, it's time to get on our knees and pray like never before. Search the scriptures, study the word of God, that we may be able to speak to others, to comfort others in a time of need. Psalm 90 and 16 says, let us Come together, let the work appear unto thy servants and the glory unto their children. Let others see what is happening. Let others see the blessings that your servants receive, how your servants are delivered from different adversities. And let it be a glory to the children, the grandchildren, and the great-grandchildren, knowing that God is faithful. And in closing, Psalm 90 and verse 17 reads, And let the beauty of the Lord, our God, be upon us, and establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands, establish thou it. Bless, Father God, the work that we do as being your servants. Bless our work. Let it be a sweet-smelling savor to you, O Lord. Bless it. Bless us to bless others. Enhance us that we may share what we have with others. Increase our wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of who you are and what is possible through you, through your son, Jesus Christ. Let us tell others of your mercy and your goodness, your faithfulness. Give us the words to speak to others. Enable us to carry out our plans and to accomplish our purposes for you because only through your generosity and your mercy can we accomplish anything. At the same time, Lord, let us pray that all that we do for you will be that offering that pleases you and the blessings that you give us through pleasing you will enable us to carry out the work that you have set before us and that we may permanently through our labor, praise, and faith and glorification to you, we may be established in your favor for all eternity. My beloved, at this present time, we are seeing the wrath of God being manifested on the whole earth, for the, on the just and the unjust. The whole world needs to repent of their disobedience and sinfulness against a just and loving God. Repentance starts with one person and can change the world and turn the wrath of God away from mankind. The question for you today is, are you willing to be a Moses who wrote this? Be a Moses and plead for God to show mercy upon this world and those inhabitants that are therein. I pray that you are. I pray that you are willing to pray. I pray that you are willing to take the word of our God through Jesus Christ to this lost and dying world. I pray that you have the faith, the stamina to stand firm in the face of adversity. My job right now, my people, is to encourage you to go on and to do that. My job also today is to offer you salvation through our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. If you have never repented of your sins and received Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, I want to pray for you today. The criterion for salvation is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you do, you shall be saved. In that is being sorry for your sins. Believing that Jesus Christ is the Savior of all mankind. That he was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, and ascended in heaven. Is now sitting at the right hand of God the Father, making intercession for all the saints of God. If you would like to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, and guarantee yourself a place in heaven when you leave this life, and also victory in this life, along with the life to come, please pray this model prayer with me. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I heard the message today, and it touched my heart. I believe that you are from everlasting to everlasting, and that you are God. I have never looked at my relationship with you the way it was explained through this message series, the way it is explained today. I know that right now, if I die, I will be separated from you. I will go to hell and then to the lake of fire. And I don't want to do that. I don't want my family to go there. I don't want my friends to go there, my co-workers. I don't want anyone to go to that horrible place. So I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I'm sorry for my sins. Save me today. Wash me and cleanse me in the shed blood of Jesus Christ, the Savior of all mankind. I believe that he is the Savior of the world, the Messiah that was prophesied to come. 
I believe that today. And I surrender my life. I give it to you today because I cannot do it myself. Only you can do it. And I receive my place in heaven right now because I believe that through my prayer of repentance and my willingness to repent, I have become a Christian. And Jesus Christ is my Savior and Lord. His blood, His precious blood that was shed on Calvary's hill has covered me, covered my sinfulness and cleansed me from all unrighteousness. And I thank you for saving me today, Father. In Jesus' name, as I praise you and thank you, amen. My beloved, if you said that prayer today and meant it from your heart, you truly repented, let me be the first to welcome you into the kingdom of God. Now what I want you to do is go to a Bible preaching, teaching church, one that teaches and preaches the word from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation, all 66 books, every word in truth with power and anointing. Get an audience with a pastor or one of the staff elders or even a deacon. Tell them what happened. Ask them to pray with you, to pray for you, to anoint you with oil, to baptize you in water by full immersion in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, they might ask you to repeat the prayer of repentance. That's fine. No problem. Ask them to mentor you, to teach you, to give you a Bible if you haven't one, and to lead you in the newness of your conversion from death to life in Jesus Christ. Then what I would like you to do is contact me by email at abundant.grace at att.net. You can also contact me through our website at www.abundantgracechurch.net or www.abundantgraceofmidlothian.com. But please let me hear from you. I want to hear about your conversion. At times people write us. Most of the time they don't. Why don't you be one of those that writes us and let us know about your conversion. No matter where you are in the world, I'd like to hear from you. Thank you for watching our message series titled From Everlasting to Everlasting. It is a prayer of Moses, the man of God. I went through Psalm 90. My beloved, please continue to watch all five parts over and over and over again. If you have a question, email me at abundant.grace at att.net. Thank you for being with us today. I'm Bishop Ramon Di Maria. I'm the senior pastor of Abundant Grace Church. My beloved, go with God.